Welcome to Flutter Teacher. In the last video, we have seen what is constructor, why to use constructor, and we also understand different properties that constructor supports. In this specific video, we'll talk about different types of constructors. So without wasting time, let's get started. In this video, we'll talk about default constructor, parameters constructor, named constructor. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to cover the factory constructor here. Because I think factory constructor is a critical concept and there has to be a dedicated video regarding the factory constructor. If you don't know what's constructor and why constructors are used, I recommend you guys to watch that video where I have talked about basics of constructor. Let me start a discussion from the default constructor. The default constructor is basically a constructor that does not accept any parameter. Practically, it is a constructor which is also known as a zero parameter constructor. For example, if we have class called employee, here we have three fields name, salary, and the role. Then, in order to print the data, we have a function called show data where I'm printing the name of the employee along with his role and the salary that he is getting. Now, let me add the default constructor in the class. Now, as we know that name of the constructor is same as name of the class, then we need to write employee here and let me put the body for the constructor. You can observe here the constructor that I have written is basically a constructor that has no parameter. So such a type of constructor is known as the default constructor. Mainly default constructor can appear in two different situations. First, if the class don't have any constructor, then Dart by default writes the default constructor for you. And there can be a default constructor written by the programmer explicitly. So in my case, in line number 17, the default constructor that we have is actually the explicit constructor written by the programmer, that is by the me, of course. Then as this constructor do not have any parameter, then the value of name, salary and role has to be initialized manually. So let me write some name here. So I can write name is equals to, let's write name as Sam. Then let's write some salary. Let me write your salary and I'm putting the value of salary, let's say 25,000 rupees in Indian. Then let me just define the role of this SAM. So I will say SAM is the manager. So let me write here manager is the role of the SAM. And that's it. Now, this is how I have defined the default constructor. Now, if we want to create an object for this one, so inside the main, we need to write in the read, let's say employee. So we have to write employee. Let's say E is equal to, we have to write the employee here. Now, the call that we have made in line number 25, that is this employee, is basically a call to default constructor. And let me print the data of this employee. So we can write here e dot show data, and that will print the data of this employee. So let me run this program, and you can observe on the console that we're getting the value Sam, which is of course name is a manager. This is the role of Sam, that is the role of this employee, and he is getting the salary of twenty five thousand. Now let me talk about the drawback of default constructor. In case of default constructor, we don't have an option to pass the desired value, so it is always a no parameter constructor. That's the reason the values of variable, that is the values of this field or let's say object has to be initialized with some dummy data. Okay, this is how I have done in my case. Now, if I create say one other instance of this employee, so let me copy this line and let me paste it here. Let me change this to say E1 and I will call this as e data. And when I run this program, you will observe here the value of object E and the E1, both these values are same. This is because I'm initializing the value of this name, salary, and the rule manually inside the constructor. Now, if you want a constructor that allows you to pass some values and whatever values that you have passed, using those values, object has to be initialized. So instead of using this default constructor, we have to switch to the concept called parameterized constructor. So as the name suggests, parameterized constructor is a constructor that accepts parameter from you. That is, when we create an object, while creating the object, we have to pass the parameters. And the parameter values that we have passed along with that values, your object will be initialized. So let me explain that one practically here. So let me write here the parameters constructor. I'm writing here employee. And inside this, let me pass some parameters here. So I can pass say n, take this n is for name. Then let me write here int say s. I will say s is for salary. And let me write here again say string r. So I will say r is for role. Now, there is a very important trick to understand in the Dart. In case of Dart, we call this as a default constructor and this one as the parameters constructor. But basically, these two things are called the 
unnamed constructor you can observe it says unnamed constructor is already defined so as per the rule in the dart we don't have an option of overloading so even we cannot overload the method not even the constructor so what is happening here we are trying to use same name for the default constructor and same name for the parameters constructor but for the dart respect to they are the single constructor now either we have to select this one or this one so make sure that in most of the cases we can consider that the default constructor and parameters constructor these are actually the same case if you think it as the unnamed constructor so there can be either default or parameters constructor in the class so what i will do here let me comment out this default constructor here and let me focus on this parameter as one now using this parameters constructor let me initialize the values of this parameter so i can write for say name is equals to and then let's write say salary is equals to say s and finally i can write role is equals to the value of r then you can observe here in main we are getting error so let me delete this line from here now as we have in line number 31 so we are trying to call the default constructor which is not actually available in the class so in this constructor we are bound to pass total three parameters because the parameters that we have passed in the parameters constructor these are the positional parameters and of course these are the compulsory ones here inside the parameters constructor we can have the positional parameter named parameter even we can have a combination of them as per our requirement let me add some parameters inside this object creation so let me write some name so i'll write the name as cd here then let me write the salary so let's say the salary is twenty four thousand. then we need to pass some role so i will write role as a team leader so let's write a team leader and when we run this program you can observe here now your employee object is initialized with these specific values so here we have Sid is a name is a team leader and he earns 24000 now i hope it's clear for you guys what's the difference between this default constructor and the parameters constructor now let me talk about the name constructor as we know that in case of dart we cannot overload the constructor directly it means we cannot have two constructor with the same name called employee now in order to solve this problem that has given the concept called named constructor now let me tell you what is basically a named constructor consider that i want this constructor that is i want this parameters constructor or you can say i want this unnamed constructor along with that one i want one more constructor so here i will write employee then we have to put the dot after this dot we have to write a valid identifier name let's say i will write this one as admin then i will write the bracket and i will go for the definition of this constructor now the thing that I have written here is employee.admin. This complete thing is called the named constructor. It means whenever we create object using this named constructor, we have to write employee.admin. For this named constructor, let me accept some parameters. So let me write here string n, which is the value for name. And let me take here say int salary. So I'll write here int s, s is for salary. Let me apply the values here. So I can write here name is equals to n and finally we need to write salary is equals to s and as i'm saying that this is a named constructor and we are saying that employee.admin so i'm considering that this is the object creation for admin only so we can write here say role so value of role and write here admin now inside the main we have already existing object here say e where i'm passing the value as name as siddharth and is a team leader let me create one more object and now in this time i will create object by using this employee.admin so we can write here say employee let me write here employee so i can write here say e2 is equals to we can write here employee dot let me write admin for this admin we need to pass only two parameters say name and the salary so i'll write name as a mark say i will write salary as a 50,000, and he is by default admin because inside the code that is inside the definition of constructor i have written the rule as the admin so let me print the value of this object e2 so we can write e2 dot show data and now let me run this program you can observe now for the object e where i'm creating object using the parameters constructor i'm getting the value as seed for the name and for the object e2 that is the object which i have constructed using the employee.admin constructor which is actually the name constructor here for this object the name is the mark name constructor is really a great concept that allows us to create multiple constructors in the class as many as we want 
Using this constructor, we have got the flexibility to initialize the object using the different techniques. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next video. If you really like the way I am explaining the concept, then don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell notification button to get my latest videos.